Welcome back to Waste Some Time with Jason Green. I am Jason Green. Do not uh, 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 check your device. I know some of you are wondering, it's Monday. What am I doing here? Uh, we're trying something new this week. A lot of people uh, uh, in this world of the interwebs want to become an influencer, content creator. I find both those words to be uh, very stupid, but uh, at the same time, I feel like they uh, fit what I Am, am doing maybe that makes me uh, stupid as well but uh, so you have to you have to do this there's a lot of reasons why people fail at being content creators uh, influencers one they're just not that good or more than good they're just not interesting uh, there's nothing that you relate to and so you don't watch there's other people who are very good at getting into the uh, the rhythm of things, the algorithm of things, if you will. And sometimes those people can uh, uh, get some numbers. But at the end of the day, content is king and you have to have it. So this is my third year on, on YouTube. And a little over 17,000 subscribers and uh, 3 million views. It's good, it's good numbers. But I'd like to do better and I'd like to do this more often. A lot of you seem to enjoy uh, the programming that I offer, which is interviews, which is tour diaries, or the when I'm on the road, and then live chats. So all this week, Monday through Friday, I'm going to be here. And we'll see if you guys like it. You guys ultimately make the decision. If you don't like watching me, you won't, and therefore there won't be a, a show anymore. So if you guys enjoy this, maybe we'll do more. But every day this week, Monday through Friday, from five to six, you can hang out with me and some of my wacky friends. There'll be different things happening every day. And um, we'll see. At the end of each broadcast, including today's broadcast, there will be a world premiere tour diary, uh, my show called My Life on the Road. If you're new here, My Life on the Road is when I'm out tour managing Stephen Piercy, all the places I go, but I get involved in other things and check out other sites and and uh, it, it can be quite fun. So today is day three, right after this show. So we'll talk a little while. Maybe we'll have a friend stop by. Uh, I just went to Disney World, and they call everybody friend. That's a big thing there. Uh, Hello, friend. Hi, friend. And then uh, if they screw up, they still go, oh, I'm sorry, friend. And uh, there's a lot of friend uh, talk, or probably overusage of the word uh, uh, friend. Yeah, a lot of people would say that you know friends are overrated. Oh, look who's here. Johnny Monaco. How are you, Johnny? Okay. How are you doing? Are you in your apartment right now? I'm in the, I'm in the gym. Oh, oh, in the gym, right. In the, the uh, You have a library and a gym and all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, we're doing a little early today, so I it's, it's in between dinner, and so I have to... Does, does this work? Can you see everything? Yeah. A lot of people lie about their wealth, Johnny. And then they have to, not you, you're showing it. You you are a man of the people in your penthouse down in the gym. Johnny, do you have two gloves on or one? The, okay. the only reason I had one glove in the photo was because uh, I had to take the photo. And it doesn't uh, work with the gloves on. Gotcha. All right, Johnny, we'll stay there because uh, we've got to start the intro. Uh, it wouldn't be a show without an intro. So... We're going to talk to Johnny. We're going to talk about the upcoming programming this week. All that and more right after. All right, we'll get back to Johnny in a second in the gym. We'll see how it's, how it's going. It takes a, it takes a motivated man to get up and 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 work out and so we we unfortunately scheduled us right in the middle of one of johnny's uh workouts for those of you who are new here and are not familiar johnny monaco lead guitar player with stephen piercy of rat he's also was the lead guitarist and singer uh, at one point in a band called enough's enough he has a new solo album uh, debuting later this year called she said she found her soulmate so uh, we'll get back to Johnny in just a second. But as I was saying earlier, every Monday through Friday, I will be here this week. And if you like it, I'll come back and do more. And there will be 
uh, like I said, a tour diary at the end of this episode. And it's very easy for you to watch that. I'm going to show you how. Uh, first of all, the link is in the description. So if you like it, and that's called a ticker right there. I don't know. Uh, uh, it's ticking. But you can uh, you can stick around and watch it with me and Johnny most likely as well. Uh, but I'll be in the chat. You won't be able to see me, but you'll get to uh, uh, hear me, as they say. And so, um, all right, let's stop the ticker. And then, I don't know how this goes. Hold on. Yeah, there you go. So there's the information. And you'll just click on it and you'll watch it. And you'll watch with us. Uh, today's episode, well, I'll tell you about it in a second. I just want to make sure you know that Monday through Friday. Tomorrow. Uh, we, we're going to do a candy challenge here on the show. Uh, Johnny's going to be part of it. Johnny, are you looking forward to the candy challenge? I, I, I mean, yeah. I'm a diabetic. I shouldn't be doing candy challenges. And you're right in the middle of training for your fight with Mike Tyson. And uh, candy's probably not the best thing. But we, we, even if we just look at it. So Johnny is going to be opening the mystery box of the 1960s candy. This is called hip candy. In here is all your favorite candies from the 60s, okay? I am going to open a candy called 70s, which is far out candy. This is all your favorite candy uh, from the 70s. And there are many sizes in there. We're going to find out which decade has the best candy. Now, my friend Jay, Sin City collector or photographer, or whatever he calls himself, he's the mod here sometimes, he is going to represent the 1980s. And Michelle will be here to represent the 1990s she's gonna rep I, I can't imagine anything good came out in the 90s other than like uh, um uh, ninja turtle slime you know I, I feel like in the 90s everyone was into like ooze and slime and ultra sour uh, things like that so but well, we're gonna find out that's tomorrow uh you want to tune in five o'clock candy challenge 60s 70s 80s 90s which decade had the best candy see people think they're just going to tune in and see the same old shit but no, where else can you watch Johnny Monaco run on a treadmill and find out which was the best candy of the decade? Uh, in addition to that, on Wednesday, Wednesday 13 will be here, uh, and he'll tell us how his tour went. He'll tell us about his upcoming tour plans, and we'll talk about some other ridiculous things. Uh, and then, then on Thursday, Sean Clark, Malfunk Sean, will be here. We're going to talk about current uh, convention, uh, uh, autograph, meet and greet conventions. He's an agent. He books the cast of Scream, the cast of Halloween, a lot of the major players. He'll be here. We'll talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, uh, maybe we're going to make a major announcement about an appearance that would involve uh, all of us and and some other people, I can't say. So that could be Thursday. And then Friday is going to be Potpourri, dealer's choice. Whatever you want to see, we'll do. Maybe we'll get Matt in here uh, as well. So, okay, let's take a look. Uh, Yasmin is letting Johnny know to get it. David wants Johnny to be safe. Jim says, go, Johnny, go. Uh, my, Mal, my, my gal, I have bad eyesight. Uh, but she says, waste some time with Jason Green all week. I'm exciting and yes johnny is doing uh the work rk finds it unintentionally hilarious well i, I mean i so far i think johnny's being very serious that uh, this it's guts to do this i looked at myself naked earlier and uh as i try not to do if it was up to me there'd be no windows in my house but i'm starting to, to develop the physique of the grinch uh, uh <laughs> it's not a good thing you know where your belly and your butt uh, just it's just not right. And one of the problems is that uh, I am a type 1 diabetic, as I say, and I shoot, inject insulin. And insulin does lead to a lot of belly fat. So I'm trying to work on it. Maybe I'll work out uh, my diet and uh, and I'm trying to do some better things as well. But uh, it's good to see and enjoys my faux leather jacket, which is the only ones I would wear. And uh, Julie pointing out Johnny is a whole sleigh. That he is. Uh, in fact, he may even guide a sleigh this year. Uh, people are enjoying it. Johnny, are you concerned that maybe other people will start doing exercise moments on their shows too? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, trendsetter. You you are. You innovate these things, Johnny Fitness, as they say, and you you. And then I think other people try to do it too, but not as funny. Huh. 
<laughs> well, I, if I keep if I stop for a second, it'll be really funny. I'll mm -hmm. be back there. <laughs> well, and that could happen at any uh, at any time. Uh, I'm looking at some of the nice words. Happy to hear them. Saying hello, hello to Diana, hello to Angie, hello to Lisa. I, I made the point that they claim that my channel is only watched by elderly men such as myself, but no, there are lots of young women who are here enjoying the show as well. Here's Lynn, and she's watching from sudden, sunny Sydney. I hope we could get there maybe uh, uh, what before Stephen retires. Uh, yeah, it's a long trip. It's a long trip, but I think it could happen. Uh, good to see Eric and Jason. They were the first ones here. Uh, Lorraine is watching from her arcade. She has an arcade in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be in the Pittsburgh area, I believe, uh, making a last-second decision to go to a thing called SteelCon. Uh, uh, they're going to have the cast of Beverly Hills 90210 and the Breakfast Club, and John Carpenter will be there. And uh, Julia Lewis, who played Audrey Griswold in Christmas Vacation. Anyway, if anyone is in the Pittsburgh area and would like to uh, uh, drive me around, I mean, hang out, uh, I'd, I'd be happy to see you. Uh, so let's talk about it. Uh, anyway, um, let's see. Uh, uh, Jimmy would like to see Johnny and Brian Forsythe do something together. Johnny on vocals. Whoever on bass and drums, but I think we, uh, they would be great together. Well, it could be. Uh, Brian Forsyth was yeah. in Las Vegas this weekend. I like to get together with them and hunt and then eat a bison. Yes. No, I'm just kidding. He, does, <laughs> he doesn't Man. do the hunting, but he does like to eat. He eat, Matt would not approve of Brian Forsyth's diet. He eats uh, meat all day and all night. Everything is meat. Uh, well, in my, in my defense, the hunting would be done at the zoo. Mm -hmm. Well, it's safer, yeah. They got snacks there. Jason would like to know, oh, not Jason. Uh, uh, thank you, Jason. I'm, I'm trying. Uh, Steven says, uh, will Michelle ever co-host? I'm grooming Michelle. Uh, oh, wait, you're not supposed to say that anymore. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're not supposed to say that, uh, especially when there's an age difference. But no, one day, Michelle will, one day Michelle will be like Kathy Lee, and you can tune in, and she'll give you her opinions on the law. Uh, but right now, she's a little shy. Uh, but she'll be here tomorrow uh, rating candy from the 80s. I, I, even though she's handling candy from the, the 80s, she grew up more in the 90s. But um, I always no, you, said like she's doing, you said she's doing 90s. Oh, I did? Yes, yeah. you're right. You're right. Thank you, Johnny. I'm sorry. She was not born in the 80s. You're correct. You're right. <clears throat> See, Johnny, when he's working out, he's more clear minded and uh, quick. Yeah. But so, yeah, that is the, the, the case. She'll do the 90s, which is better. Even though I'm doing 70s, I don't know. I kind of remember 70s candy. And uh, I, I don't know the difference between 60s and 70s candy. But we'll find out. I, I don't know 60s candy. I was it's like uh, yeah, in between zero and five. Yeah, you grew up in the 70s. But I think a lot of that 60s candy crossed over when, when uh, 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 transitioned, if you will. They have this candy cigarettes that they were giving out on people's doors on the 80s cruise. They were putting out 80s candies, which was kind of fun. Right, right. Yeah, Doug, is, Doug wants to know if you're getting yoked, Johnny. Are you getting yoked? Yeah. Bikini season. Mm -hmm. Ready for summer. And, uh, yeah, no, it's a good point, Johnny. Uh you're motivating everyone. Thomas turned 42, and he hopes he can get a gym session in as hard as Johnny. And, uh, yeah. All right. So, anyway, we got a lot of a lot of stuff. We'll see how this works. There's 208 people watching. There's normally 300. I don't really beg people to come watch. More people will watch this in the replay, and those people will learn that you're going to have all kinds of surprises this week and uh, all kinds of fun things. I I'm trying to figure out, you know, all day, what do I talk about? I was gonna talk about some music news, but I read the music news and I realize I hate um, everybody. And I don't care, you know, about uh, uh, the big controversy is that the Dead Daisies kicked out Brian Tishy. Did you hear about that, Johnny? No, I, I don't know anything about that. Yeah, and then he commented, Listen, I don't know how to say this, but the Dead Daisies is what's called an arranged band. It's like an arranged marriage. There's a guy who's got a lot of money and wanted to be in the rock business, and he mm -hmm. pays these guys and pretends that it's a real band. 
I mean, no right. offense to those guys. I, I maybe I've had some of them on the show. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't care what happened. That's a slow news day. And so, uh, therefore, there's not much to, to say. Uh, someone says he's going to be in Gene Simmons' band. Maybe. I don't expect Gene Simmons' band to play that often, but who knows? Yeah, I met him on the boat on the Monsters of or no, the Axes and Anchors cruise. Yeah, I thought he was really, really good, and he played drums and sang and played guitar. And then I seen him afterwards, we talked for a while. You know, it's like, oh, great, that's awesome. And then the next day, we were walking down the hall, and those halls are really narrow. So I said, oh, hey again, hi Brian. And he goes, who, who are you? Yeah. So, I, I those are the things I've heard. I don't know the guy, and if he's watching, and maybe he is because he's got a lot of free time on his hands now. Suddenly. Uh, I, but I've heard he can be a little egotistical. I hate to say that. Maybe it's not true. Maybe he's the best guy in the world. But some people like this. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Uh, okay, let's see. Johnny burning up the fretboards and the treadmill. And uh, This is just the intro. I, I start on this. I'm going to go downstairs. Yeah. Well, we're only 16 minutes in. We have plenty of time. Uh and if someone said Bruce Kulik is in Gene Simmons' band, I, I don't believe that. But you never know, he's available too. Uh, Who cares? Yeah, There's well, you see, that's why, that's why we don't read the news. And then, like, normal news is, like, all political and stupid also. Or yeah. incredibly depressing, and there's no reason to do that. We're here to lift uh, uh, people's spirits and motivate right now. People are watching and saying, if Johnny could get on that treadmill, uh, 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 Bo is asking, is this going to be a two-hour show with Johnny running all the way through? Well, no, because one, the show is only going to be an hour. Uh, and I think other... he's trying to be funny. Oh, no, I think so, too. <laughs> Try being the key word. I, I don't think he's trying to be funny. I think he, maybe he's bored, but I don't know. Uh, you know, last time we said something, I guess we offended one of the viewers, and it wasn't intentional. Right. But I mean, people say things, and then we just reply without censorship, and then all of a sudden, we're jerks. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I, that's what I think too. There was a little controversy, you know, as you mentioned last week. Somebody thought we we picked on them. They were very hurt and very bad, and uh, maybe never yes. be hurt from. Yeah, so screw, screw you two. As we said, screw you two. Yeah. I mean, what? I mean, I didn't say anything that mean. He commented that Mark Goodman is on, he, it was a, he interviewed Stephen Piercy, and I thought, well, you're telling me what Stephen Piercy did. Obviously, I'm there. And then he said something oh. else, and I just feel like everyone's oh. a know it all. Oh, 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 and then I said that. I said, everybody has a little bit of subject matter to give you their opinion. But which they think is fact, <clears throat> but not enough to know that they're wrong. And he maybe took that personally. And uh, I mean, hey, you know, I don't offer up, I don't go to my doctor and talk to him about my duodenum, my zygote process, you know, my spontaneous pneumal combustion. I don't talk about that. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And so also when you're talking for hours at a time, it's hard to carry a conversation, and sometimes because there's a lot of riffraff in here, there's a lot of dummies. The thing is, uh, and a lot of great people too. But because I threw on a different day, we might have outsmarted uh, 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 some of the dummies. Um, too bad. Get, get in line. Yeah. <laughs> now hold on. I wanted to see this. Brian Kirk, who's a channel member, thank you for being a channel member. My opinion is that Johnny and Jason are awesome. Well, I tend to agree. And then someone else is getting mad at someone calling them woke or something. Usually assholes use that word. Uh, whatever. I don't know. I don't spread, have time. Spread, to... spread that positivity about us around because Easter's coming up and there's only time for one crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you make a very good point. Here's a question from uh, Jim Gallagher. And thank you for the super chat, Jim. The people who super chat are going to prove whether or not I can uh, sit here every day. Uh, rat question. Is it true that Robert Crosby was drafted by the Dodgers? The question is Stephen Thirsty, not for me. Uh, I will find out for you. I, I think there was some truth to him wanting to play uh, hmm. baseball. But cool. Matt Thorne would also know the answer to that. Yeah. Uh, 
Donnie, I wanted to talk a little bit about Warren Martini playing yesterday at Rock and Roll Fantasy. Games oh, yeah. Or over the weekend. Yeah. I feel like it should be addressed. I could have made a clickbait title and said we're going to react to it. Right. Uh, there's a lot of people out there, some of them are dummies, who don't think Warren Martini can play anymore. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where that could come from. I'll tell you uh, where it comes from. It comes yeah. from an entitled... Un, uneducated mind that doesn't know anything about that. So rock and roll fantasy camp is a weird thing. You know, uh, it's basically for people who've got a lot of money, you know, but it could be a lot of fun. You do get to jam. I did work with them a little bit, booking people. Uh, I know David Bischoff, who owns it. He was on this show. So War, the idea was that Warren went around to the, group, uh, the counselors' groups. So the, the rock stars, and some of these counselors are far from rock stars, but you go to a group with them, and you learn songs, and then someone like Warren D. Martini will come in the room and jam with you. But the jam itself is awkward because there's already three guitar players in the room. Uh, and they oversold probably. And so Warren comes in. I personally think if I was there, I would want to see Warren play the solo. I would want to just watch. But no, the, the, the people who pay get to play the solos. Sometimes people who play the solos aren't qualified uh, uh, well, to play solos. They're, they're paying. Yeah, they're paying to be there and they're having a good time. And, you know, he's, he's obviously letting that happen because that's what he's there for. Well, he, yeah, he's laying there and taking it. But, and that is what he's there for. He's there to meet people. And uh, it's, it's a, really a photo op and an autograph thing. And Warren is incredibly rare. But so, Johnny, uh, there's a clip of him playing You're in Love. What did you think? I thought it was great. If you watch the outro solo, it's totally classic Warren. Uh, he's always been good. Uh, I mean, real great. The Trailblazer, he's legendary uh, guitar player with uh, phrasing. Uh, no choice vibrato, songwriting, everything. And uh, people like that, you know, even if they're a little rusty or something, they, they still have it in them. Like when, like watching Tyson train, it's still the same person. You got to give them that. I mean, and he probably, maybe he doesn't practice all the time, but what I saw was awesome. I, I thought it was great. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. Uh, yes, he doesn't play every day, I'm sure, at this uh, point. But he, he played an outro solo. It was great. He also played Way Cool Jr. He was just sort of jamming and having fun with the people there. But uh, I, I think one day Warren Martini will be in Rad again. I'm not, I, I can't say anything uh, uh, other than my, my opinion. But I think, I've said this a million times, if you have Stephen Piercy and you have Warren Martini, you have enough rat for everyone. No one cares about Juan and no one cares about Bobby. Um, if they did, that's fine if you could do all four, but I don't think that the four will play with each other, and so you might as well take the one who matters, can sell some tickets, and then that would be uh, Stephen and Warren. Uh, anyway, but yeah, it was fun to see. That's a new story that people should see. Uh, a lot of people try to say Warren can't play as well or that uh, he doesn't want to play. This proves uh, that he, he is uh, doing both. Okay, uh, uh, let me take a look here. Someone's mentioning Chris DeGarmo. I'd love to have Chris DeGarmo on the show. You know, Chris DeGarmo and Jeff Tate wrote all the Queensryche songs, yet neither one of them is in Queensryche. It really confuses me. And they pay tribute to songs that other people wrote. And when you get these name things going on, it can get strange. Uh, okay, let's take a look here. Uh, yeah, uh, people are hoping to see Warren at the Whiskey. I just don't think Warren's going out in public just yet. I think that the reason he did that was all he had to do is go into that uh, room. Uh, Jake Paul is going to get best of Mikey. Uh, I mean, I, I, I know that's a funny uh, conversation. Look, the, the Jake Paul, who's an influencer, much as myself, uh, not quite as handsome or in interesting and doesn't have a sidekick like Johnny, but uh, he... He, he, I don't care how hard he trains. I don't care that he's 30 years younger. If this is a real fight, if they're going to fight, uh, Mike Tyson, uh, who might be behind Johnny, um, he's an animal. It, it should knock, you should knock him out. I mean, uh, they should be put no, it into next zip code. Yeah, 
And it's not because um, Mike Tyson is old or any of those things. He can still punch. If you watched Rocky Balboa, the last Rocky movie, they said because Rocky was older, they had to just train him how to punch harder. They weren't going to have him dance. They weren't going to have him stick the jab. They were going to have him double down on heavy punches. Well, I don't think you're going to see Mike Tyson plan on going 10 rounds. If he does, then it's a fake fight. And uh, he went in like Floyd Mayweather, danced around, took the win and left. I think in this case, it's on Netflix also. It's not on pay-per-view. So if you're watching it on Netflix, I think everyone wants to see this influencer get knocked out. There's plenty of people who would love to see uh, me get knocked out. Uh, and depending on what it pays, I, I might consider it. But uh, if this is real, and I don't think Mike Tyson is the type of guy who takes a payday. He's already said that he's taking this 100% serious. Um, then he should knock this guy out and, and move on. He's 57. What's funny is when George Foreman was 46, they said he was too old to fight. It's hard for him to get a license. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm not too worried about uh, Iron Mike, who is a Las Vegas uh, resident. A lot of people are hopping on their treadmills as well. Uh, someone said he heard they're wearing headgear. If they wear headgear, then, yeah, it'll be a bit of a joke. I think Tyson could still <laughs> knock him out with headgear, but uh, that'll be a little bit of a joke. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Boa says he needs to take his clothes off his treadmill, and that is true. I've been looking to invest in a treadmill. <laughs> Michelle, Michelle has one, but I'm scared that it would become a clothing uh, rack. So, where's Amir from Rough Cut? It's a random question out of nowhere, but he has his band that he still plays with. I can't think of the name, but uh, Matt said that him and Amir maybe would come on together at some point. But Amir's out there and he's playing, and he's been on the show. He's a nice guy. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, Johnny versus Floyd Mayweather, four rounds. That could be a good, a good fight. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. All right. So we're 27 minutes in. Johnny's in the gym, as you can see. And uh, oh, yes, it's Denise is here. She got her treadmill off of Craigslist. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm getting close. Uh, Wednesday is Wednesday 13. Uh, uh, today is Monday. Um, actually, last Wednesday was the, the 13th. All right. I'm trying to get through your comments. People are starting to pick up close to 300 people here uh, now. If you live near Johnny, you could probably stop by his building right now and join him. Yeah. Let's see. I'm trying to get through everybody's uh, comments. Oh, yeah, someone would like to see Wednesday work out. I don't think uh, – oh, so you're asking where he is. Yeah, well, he's in his home, and uh, he'll be on here uh, Wednesday. I doubt he'll be in the gym. I doubt he'll be in bright light uh, for that matter. Okay, so tonight's episode of My Life on the Road is day three of the 80s cruise, and Johnny was still there at that point, and uh, – Mark Goodman interviews Stephen Piercy, and you're going to see highlights of that. You'll see highlights of, of the show. Uh, I think we go see Tron maybe in this one. No, that might have been the last one. I'm not sure how this one ends. But uh, in upcoming episodes, this week you will see Ray Parker Jr., and you will see uh, Ephraim Ramirez, who played Pedro in um, Napoleon Dynamite. And you'll see all kinds of interesting uh, people. Uh, uh, a lot of people think that maybe Bobby Rock inspired Johnny to work out. And, uh, I don't think that's the case. Uh, Tron was day two. So, yes, I don't know what we watched the third night, but you will uh, see it. Johnny LaLanne. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I like that one. Uh, <laughs> someone thinks that Joe Elliott might be behind Johnny. Johnny, is Joe Elliott there? I know what you're talking about. He's here all the time. He works out a lot. Mm -hmm. Saw him in the grocery store. Took the last three weight potatoes. What about the chick with the butt? That's getting a lot of attention. She could. Every time I'm here, she comes by. She walks past here. And she gets her mail. She's got a dog. A little dog. 
And uh, I don't like the girls, with little dogs. I, I don't trust them. Yeah, I don't trust the dogs either. Mm -hmm. I, I uh, seen her walking by the other day, and she looked at me like she heard the podcast. <laughs> yeah, she, she like. <laughs> I don't. She's a she fan of reels. <laughs> That's right. <sighs> um, you know, I should point out for those of you who would like to meet myself and Johnny Monaco, and even more importantly, see Stephen Piercy live that there are probably about 30 shows right now that have not been announced. So for those of you who go to officialstephenpiercy.com uh, and you don't see a lot of dates, don't be scared. Don't be alarmed. There's a lot of shows to come with a lot of big surprises. A lot of new things going to happen, and I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, I want to point out that today a show in Toledo, Ohio was announced. Johnny, did you see the big announcement? Um, what? Oh, is it with all the bands? It's a it's a who's who in Whoville. The the lineup is Vixen and Steven Adler, and then now it's where it gets tricky. So, uh, maybe Water. maybe Slaughter and Ray White. And it's not. I don't think. Uh, I don't know who the other one is. It's either it's Great White. It's either Great White or Quiet Riot. Maybe the, you you think it's Great White this time? Yeah. I, okay. I mean, someone. There's someone on Instagram that every time it, it uh, posts, he posts, gives, sends me a, a poster. Me too. Is know, his name I Jim? Who, I don't. I'm not sure. I don't know who he works for, but he's I really get 400 of those. He's really on it, and I, I just found out from that. Yeah, if someone Johnny uh, is interested in your feet. You'd have to go to Johnny's private site to see that. They want to see your sweaty, <laughs> smelly feet. Uh, that costs money. That's not free. Um, okay. Uh, if someone said all of Sullivan's bands, well, that is the case, for right? Sure. Sullivan but, uh, has also been he's also been really uh, working out a lot, and right, uh, he's really in shape. He's doing really good. You inspired him, I guess. That's what I've been told. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I mean, that's cool. A lot of people watching. Uh, yeah, Johnny, I got to get together with you before tomorrow's show. We work uh, out. Well, maybe, but uh, I got to get you a this box of candy. <laughs> oh, that's not really helping any. What are those wristbands you're wearing? Is that uh, what is that? Uh, that looks like. Uh, um, this is uh, I think it's Jägermeister. It looks like the Queensrÿche logo. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was either Queensrÿche or what's that band that the kids love? They play really fast. They're, they're like fake oh, gothic. Wow. Is it uh, Avenged Sevenfold? Avenged Sevenfold, yeah. No, it's just, um, I've had this one for a long time. I don't really wear wristbands a lot on stage because I don't like the feel of it. But in here, I got to keep doing this. So it, it helps. And uh, I just ordered some some new ones. I got some uh, Adidas ones coming because uh, I just ordered two tennis rackets. We have a court here. So I'm going to start challenging people on this, people off the internet and have them come here and challenge me to tennis match. Well, that would be good. If anyone watching would like to uh, accept Johnny's tennis challenge, uh, you can do that. We'll we'll record it live and on the air, and you can play Johnny in, uh, yeah. in tennis. A lot of women trying, watching. Here's Missy. I'm trying to train because I want to uh, I want to match Josh Todd. Mm -hmm. He's really good. Well, I think you could do it, Johnny. Uh, you've got the, a good. A frame for working out, you know, your height and build. You're, you're not a big fat so, and uh, I think you could get back in shape in no time. Me, I, I you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a big, gigantic, tall, fat. You know, it takes a lot more time. I think you're going to be ripped very soon. I mean, I don't know. I think anybody could do it. I think all you have to do is really. It's not like how hard you go or how fast, or it's how often. If you have to be consistent. That's all it is. You have to do it every day, and you got to be really consistent. And that's if you could do that, you can make some progress. Yeah, well, uh, and, and Troy is pointing out that yes, we'll be able to see Johnny on the beach in South Florida in May when we get down there. Um, and back to the shows, there's a lot of shows being added. In April, we will be in Texas for three shows. I can't say where all of them are because I don't remember, and one of them is not announced yet. But you're going to want to come to Texas uh, and have a, a good old time. 
And then um, there's a bunch of shows around M3. It's not just M3 anymore. It's going to be a, 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 it's called routing. And it's going to be a whole routed thing. We're going to be working. And uh, let's see, what does this say? Jim Foster says, did Warren D show at Rock Fantasy Camp this past weekend? And in LA, Britt did not post on her Instagram. I was surprised Britt Lightning is the musical director at Fantasy Camp. She didn't share anything of Warren, the only person with any talent. Uh, I don't know. But I saw I other people. Reached out to her. I played. Say it again, Johnny? Me and her are pretty good friends. I've known her a long time since before she, when she had her own band. And, yeah. Um, I reached out to her, you know, saying, you know, if you ever need somebody for the camp, I hope she knew which camp I was talking about. Uh, you might give me a call. And, you know, I'd love to do it. But I think she blocked me. No. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and she's going to send you a one-way ticket to, to Belson. <laughs> Too soon? Uh, Johnny's going to be hurting tomorrow. Someone said they uh -oh. thought Johnny enjoyed pickleball. I've been doing this every day, sometimes two times a day for three weeks now. I, I, I was surprised that wasn't that sore in the beginning. I thought I would be, but... I'm not like really using heavy, heavy weight. Robert thinks that I should start by bicycling. I don't know if you ever saw the episode where I rode a scooter. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> not for me. As long as there's no parked cars around, it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. I did walk a marathon. That's 26.2 miles. I have done that in my life. Um, Pre-diabetes, I did that. And, uh, you know, I, I can walk for days and days and days, but... Uh, uh, I, it's hard to be motivated. Let's see. Uh, it says the wristband features Puerto Rico's Bacardi rum logo. That is what Johnny is endorsing. And uh, uh, Johnny Desmond's concerned. He wants to make sure that you stretch out in a hot shower afterwards. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows everything. He also said that he'd be happy to uh, uh, towel you down afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't date anymore. I'm not dating. Right. No. No. I get you. I'm, I'm, off, I'm off the circuit. Yeah. Well, actually, you're on a circuit. That's what they call that when you hit the different weights. Almost 300 people have somehow found us in a little over 20 minutes. We are going to watch day three, my life on the road, the 80s cruise uh, of day three. And as I said, there's going to be a lot of shows coming up. And I would like to uh, uh, see as many of you as possible while we're on the road. Uh, Colleen asks, Jason, are you a type 1 or type 2 diabetic? When were you diagnosed? I was diagnosed at an old age 10 years ago, 9 years ago. And I, uh, I am a type 1 uh, diabetic. So... Uh, I was fortunate to have at least half my life to uh, um, to eat whatever I wanted. I unfortunately, I, I I hear the diabetics sometimes can't make it past seventy six. I'm going to uh, try my best to make it. My A one C and my insulin is in good shape. Johnny, that gym is great. And, uh, this is the downstairs. I start upstairs. That's where they got all the fish stuff. The bikes and stuff and then down here they got the free weights in the corner but i don't really do that mm -hmm. i just do these i'm just trying to start out you know pretty soon i'll be doing i'll be over there a lot of people are talking yeah a lot of people are talking about uh, bikes and bmx i'm gonna go see a movie in the theater called rad you remember rad johnny no uh, i don't think so is that a skateboard movie bicycles bmx and uh Got an all-star cast, but it's playing again in the theaters. Uh, it's it's going to be totally rad day, they're calling it. It's coming up soon, in the next few days. And uh, I saw it on, on VHS once, but my favorite thing about rad is the song Send Me an Angel by the band Real Life, who I was fortunate to see on the cruise uh, uh, multiple times. And David Sterry, lead singer of Real Life, will be on the show soon, live from Australia. So that's coming. Uh, and uh, let's see. Yeah, there are people think Johnny might end up looking a little bit like Kane Roberts. You want to get a machine gun guitar? Mm -hmm. I don't think those will go over good at the uh, fairs in Ohio. 
No. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, I'll get tackled and thrown to the ground. No, I swear it's it's a guitar. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I'm getting tired quick. I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. I usually do like five of those, but I think I'm going to do just a couple more. And I just do five of those circuit. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do that today. Uh, Jim, 278 watching, but only 18 likes. That's crazy. Uh, please make sure you like this video. I got to do this every day. If you want to see uh, new content every day. I mean, listen, there's 275 people watching right now. This is unannounced. Uh, I say it often. Some people can't get 275 views in six months. So, uh, But hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Let me know what you'd like to see more of on this show. Uh, 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 I, I hate to be the, the fun police. I read through the comments and I have to decide what is funny and what is stupid. But... Um, Uh, is, uh, is Johnny joining Danzig now? Well, that may be true. He might. Can't, uh, can't talk about it. I'm just trying to get in shape a little bit. You know, I was getting lazy for a couple of years. I used to work out all the time. Kind of got lazy and working more on, like, music, you know. But, uh, I've got time here, and it's right here, in the, like, down here in the lobby. Yeah. Uh, 70 pounds. Um, Jennifer Lee... Uh, Jennifer Lee, hold on, where did she go? Not Jennifer Jason Lee, but Jennifer Lee. She asked, how old were you when you started playing the guitar? You. Uh, uh, 12. So Johnny says you got to start young. And uh, and you got to have a lot of money to go to a guitar school. Right, Johnny? <laughs> That's what someone thinks. Mm-hmm. In the hands. You have it or you don't. Uh, okay, let's see. But somebody the said, the check. Stephen J said he'd like to see a house tour of mine, a collectibles tour. That is a popular one. Hopefully, by the end of the year, I can have this place organized or move it into a new place and show you some of the collectibles. It is pretty crazy. You, you'll, you'll be impressed or you'll think I'm insane. But there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, good question is, when does Vanessa work out? I haven't seen her in a while. My thing flooded again. So I thought it would I called her. I was texting her. Like, hey, it's happening again. She goes, oh, okay. I'll I'll talk to the you know the property management. She goes, Can I ask why you think it's coming from from my unit? I said, Well, because last time this happened, that's what that was the case. It was in the wall, remember? They fixed it and they came down here and told me there was a leak in the wall. She's like, okay. Mm-hmm. But you're going to speak to your property management too, right? I'm like, yeah. So I stressed it a little more. Like I filled the tub up and I let it run and run. And it was coming from my tub. So oh. they came back in and fixed it. And uh, You should maybe have told her that you need to come up to her place and fill her tub <laughs> to see what happens. And then you could have worn a pair of flippers and like an ear right. tube. <laughs> right. And by tub, I mean your diaphragm. I mean yeah. your tub. <laughs> Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I tried one of these before and I jumped on it and immediately hit my head on the TV. I thought I was going to have to go to the, to the first aid. I was going to hit yeah, the bag for a while. I've never seen anybody in here hit the bag. They got a, a yeah. new tie bag here. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's someone in here hitting it now. They got gloves and everything. And there's like, I think the trainer. That's oh. okay. It's good. At least, at least she's preparing herself because uh, I actually put together a self defense class years ago. It's um, it's a, a rape. Uh, and, I don't uh, think you sexual, say that. Sexual assault. Oh, it's a it's a class to protect yourself. And uh, I have it all written out, and I think it'd be good for here because I. But a lot of people, there's a room right here. Look at this room. This would be perfect for it. You know, do a little class in here because you always want to be prepared in case you're like somewhere in the garage, someone jumps out. You know, you can't rely on. Uh, David Carradine movies because he, you got to really throw down. You got to fight. To see, you know, fight for your life. So you got to really. Johnny, I'm frozen time. on my end. So you keep talking and I'll be back. Ooh, frozen on your end. Yeah. I'll be back. <laughs> okay. 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 Getting a good workout in here. Um, yeah, here's the uh, 
of people yelling at me. So, cool. Not sure how to work this, but there we go. Doesn't take much work enough to do that. This is a second floor. Balcony is really nice. I'm up on 11. So, oof, this one's going at it. Pretty good. I'm a, she's fighting the traditional style, leading with the left. Must be a righty. But usually, um, I lead with my right. It's unorthodox, but uh, in Jeep no, you train to lead with your right, it's your strong side. You want to just get in. But boxers normally don't do that. They usually set you up with the jab and plow through with the power. Sometimes I'll switch sides, depending on who I'm fighting. But, Leading, leading at your strong sides on orthodox. Looks all right. I'm doing these machines, maybe. I never did one of these. Whew. Looks kind of cool. Right. What do we got here? First time. Oh boy. Oh, jeez. I'm about to get this going. That's how you. All right. Yeah, I'm all right, Johnny. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, with this technology, I got to get a better uh, uh, laptop and all kinds of other things. Uh, internet, who the hell knows? But this, luckily, you were here to entertain the people and and and, and inspired a new channel member, VBT. Welcome. Thank you so much for becoming a new uh, oh, channel member. That's that's our friend from St. Louis. Remember, he always posts long of all the bands he's going to put on his podcast, and he puts you in there. Oh, so, oh, yeah, he plays music. That's right. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. He plays he oh, plays no Johnny's solo music and he plays my stuff. Uh, uh, this is weird. Sin City Rejects. Well, so thank I you. I like, I I like this. It's a weird one. Johnny, did you ever um, get the Doug Marks method tapes? I don't understand this machine. Um, no. I mean, I know who he is. You um, might have been a little older for that. Um, you were probably already playing by that point. I did get them. I, I got his uh, cousin, Mel Bay. Mm -hmm. That's his great-grandfather. I started with Mel Bay, like most. The next guitar book I bought was by Rick Derringer. Mm. Then I tried the, uh, the Metal Method garbage. I tried Jim yeah. Gillette's singing Metal Method, and I'm not going to say anything bad about it because it puts me in the mouth. And he could fight uh, Jake Paul, I'll tell you that. And then the other one I did is this guy, uh, Hawkins, Curtis, Hawk, Curtis Mitchell, Curtis Mitchell. He had them. But they weren't allowed to give you tab at the time. So they would talk the numbers. Oh, look at that. Work that going on. And so if it was like an E chord, they would go, okay, zero, two, two. And then it would sound like they were reading the phone book. And you would have to get your pen and paper out and write down the tablature, uh, and it, I didn't find it was very effective. Yes, you could learn some songs, but Johnny, a lot of people just learn where to put their fingers, but they don't learn how to play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I know a lot of people like that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that as far as, you know, to it, you can only get so far, but I mean, if that's what you just want to do, then, but don't, don't poop with the people that learn how to, you know, learn the language because music is like a language, right? If, if, we put exactly. words together and we speak because there's letters involved. Same thing with music. Georgia is always on my mind. Georgia says we should do another haircutting segment. Johnny, I need to get these, this fixed. Uh, they bamboozled me. It, I don't mind the length, but these are supposed to be layers, and there is not layer. This is one long uh, a mop. That's weird. Do you think someone would have told you about that? No, you did tell me, and I told the person who cut it, but it didn't matter. Um, yeah, they, they they did what they wanted. Yeah, I can. Uh, but we'll we got well, we're going we go on the tours. So. We'll do it. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, Zamfir, uh, master of the pan flute, he did the score for the Karate Kid. If you didn't know that. Uh, Getting thirsty. People said they'd like to read about uh, my haircut on Blabbermouth again. Uh, a uh, question for Johnny from RJC72. Uh, 
uh, hey Johnny, what do you think of the current incarnation enough of Enough's Enough with Chip on vocals? And do you think Donnie will ever return to to the band? I mean, I don't think I even have to say anything. Anybody with hearing can 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 listen to it, and I think it's I think it's terrible. I don't think any anyone in that band deserves to be on that stage. I mean, Chip, you know, he wrote part of those songs, and he's a great bass player, and definitely a big part of the sound. And that's fine, but um, I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't really know what to say as far as Donnie coming back. I mean, I. I know Donnie has some shows coming up. He's playing in California. Playing at the Whiskey, he's got some stuff happening. Um, I've seen his uh, solo band. I like. I'd rather watch that. But uh, I don't. Uh, know Chip's, if you, if you Chip's band back. stinks. Johnny's putting it nicely. They stink. It's nothing. What enough enough was supposed to be. Uh, it would be nice if Donnie comes back. I don't think there's enough money necessarily to make it worthwhile. But you never know. Heather asks Heather Tiller. She says, will y'all ever come back? Uh, oh, will y'all ever come to KY? I mean, I don't really need a lubricant like that. I could probably come without the KY. But, oh, we're talking about Kentucky. I apologize, Heather. Um, we will be in, uh, in, in Kentucky very soon, Heather. We will be there. I believe Louisville. Johnny, does that sound right to you? Yeah, I think so. You know how when people, like, they think they're really hip and being funny and they, they go on tour? And then they get to the state and they go, Kentucky, I'm in you. <laughs> That's worse. Yeah. I took a cheap joke, but yeah, I don't like the in you thing. I also don't like office for the night. Okay, Adam, thank you so much for the super chat. It's much appreciated. Uh, and this is to buy Johnny leg warmers for his workout. Well, I will get right <laughs> on there. Yeah, I will get right on there. Okay, let's see what else we got. We got about 10 minutes, and then we are going to start the world premiere. Uh, uh, Michelle is saying the name of the gig, uh, but I don't know. Well, Michelle could say it. I, Michelle, I don't know if this is announced. But is, is it? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, which, one, which one? The Kentucky State Fair in Louisville, August 17th. Oh, no, it's not, it's not announced yet. Okay, well, that's a secret. You didn't hear it from me. Uh, uh, and uh, But there you go. You got a scoop. I didn't say it. Uh, Heather would like to meet us both. Well, thank you, Heather. It would be nice to meet you uh, as well. Chip wears women's yoga pants. Well, you should wear some women's underwear because every time he gets on stage, it's like grape nuts. Mm -hmm. Old, old grape nuts. Uh, some, someone strangling a turkey in his trousers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Donnie playing with Alex Kane is pretty cool. Alex Kane, I spoke to. He'll be here soon. We're just waiting to see if Stanley comes on first. Uh, he calls him Stan, S-T-A-N-N. -N. <laughs> oh, oh, you gotta, you gotta come over. You got a beautiful place. <laughs> We're right on the water. If Stanley doesn't come on, I will interview Johnny as Stanley. So <laughs> <laughs> you'll probably, you probably get just as much. You could probably practice the moves in here, you know. Mm -hmm. You could do some dancing while you're there. Mm -hmm. Hope Stephen is coming to St. Louis. I feel like we're always coming to St. Louis, but I'm not positive. Would you ever interview a member of Steel Panther? This has been a popular thing that's come up in the past. Uh, I would not interview one of those guys pretending to be the character. I don't think it's funny. Uh, I, Stanley, funny. Great Cat, funny. Steel Panther, corny. Overdone. I don't, I don't. And I asked Eddie Funk, because I, I, we did the show at the Rainbow, and I talked to uh, Ralph. Ralph is Michael Starr, and, drunk, and I said, Eddie, would you interview those guys? And he said, not in character. But if they wanted to talk about their uh, their careers and things, and Ralph was in LA Guns and did other things, he's on the soundtrack, Rockstar, then maybe I would, um, you know, maybe I would uh, interview them, if that makes sense. Have you ever seen Brett Michaels bald? Uh, bald? I, no, I haven't. We don't have that kind of relationship. 
Um, all right, we're almost there. Johnny, uh, showing you a little bit of, of the moves. Maybe I'll inspire a few people to work out as well. Uh, uh, in this day and age of digital download screening, how do we explain the vinyl resurgence and in some cases cassettes coming back? Because it's nostalgic, because young people just want something that, they, uh, that they've heard about. That, that's all it is. Most people aren't even listening to their vinyl. Michelle collects vinyl. She does listen to it. But a lot of people just buy it because it looks cool. And yeah. uh, it, it's, a, and that's it's a novelty. Kind of the point I was trying to make when I was talking about vinyl. Someone had to be like, you know, tell him it's a billion dollar industry. And I get it. If you're a huge band. I'm just saying, I don't think you need to put out vinyl if you're a smaller band or whatever. If you are, you're doing it for the money. And I know they sell turntables, so shut up. Yeah, the uh, everyone wants to own a dodo bird or something rare that they've heard of. People would buy eight tracks again. It's part of the fun, nostalgia, and uh, yeah. And so things come and go. Scott is asking if uh, see you in Texas. Any chance of a third gig? Yes, I would say there will be another gig. I would suggest. Um, Uh, watching Johnny on the bag, I think he could take Chip. Well, I think so, too. Uh, yes, Lisa, I agree with you. Why Steel Panther was a headliner over Stephen Piercy? It's a little embarrassing. Steel Panther's a joke, you know? It's, it's, and it's not a new joke. It's a joke that's gone around, put on a wig, and lip things to tracks. Most of the shit that you see when that band plays isn't live. And listen, it's a comedy show. Uh, not to say that uh, Russ Parrish isn't a good guitar player. He's a great guitar player. But it's a, it's a novelty, and it's a comedy show. And uh, and the jokes get corny. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Uh, I don't care what they think. Uh, Jim, thank you so much for Super Chat. Love the tour diaries. Johnny is killing Stephen Piercy shows. Amazing solos. Well, I'm glad uh, that you noticed that. You'll get to see Johnny a lot more uh, in the uh, future. Okay. Um, any opinion about the new Mick Mars album? I, I, I've i been talking to mixed people about him coming on the show. I passed originally because everyone and their great grandma interviewed him. And I didn't think he there was anything to say. I heard a couple of the tracks and I don't want to hate them like everybody tries to do. I liked the first one with the Jacoby guy, the Papa Roach. I thought it was all right. I mean, it's not, it's not necessarily for me. Uh, but there's people who are liking it. And I'm happy to see Mick Mars doing something that he likes. Uh, okay, so that's that. Uh, Patreon goodies still coming. Rest in peace, Eric Carmen. I think that's two separate thoughts, but uh, yes, Patreon stuff on the way. I just ordered a ton of new things, and I find a bunch of things, and uh, uh, yeah, so all that it's it's shit. it's coming. Uh, so I shit. Johnny is a great asset for Stephen. Well, I agree. I agree, which is why I recommended Johnny for that job. Uh, are you a fan of the GDM that DJ Ashba has produced and playing? I don't even know what it is. No. Is it a water line? I think so. Uh, I only drink mineral water. Uh, Mick has done a ton of interviews. Yes, Mick has done 10,000 interviews. Sometimes people like to see the way I handle things. Uh, but I don't know really how much I could ask him that hasn't been asked uh, a lot. So you were in the Motley Crew. What was that like? You, 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 you know. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about the Jeff Tate band? I've never seen the Jeff Tate band, but I am an advocate for Jeff Tate over Queensryche. Jeff Tate is Queen's right. He was supposed to do the show, and there was some time difference, and something went in. Jason says we're 58 minutes in, uh, which is good to know. The live show is going to begin, the uh, premiere, at 6.15. So we got a couple more minutes, and then we're going to uh, really get out of here. Uh, and we'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow is candy day. Johnny gets to rest and, uh, and have some candy. I'm trying to get Johnny to go to Junior's Cheesecake with me. It just opened in Resorts World, I think Johnny could go for a nice matzo ball soup, a little brisket, and a piece of cheesecake uh, after that workout. Um, and uh, <laughs> somebody's comments are funny. Uh, 
Will there be copyright strikes tonight? Uh, not as many. They're not strikes, by the way. For what? Who are you talking about, Johnny? Uh, you said copyright for what? Oh, for the show coming up. For the show coming up. Uh, if there is, it's already been removed. Uh, but you can still tip if you like. Um, Man, I am really okay. out of shape. I'll tell you what, hitting the bag gets you more shape than running on the bike. Oh, uh, yes. Or a treadmill. Yeah. It's harder. A lot harder. Yeah, I, I agree. So we've got a few more minutes. <laughs> I want to make sure you subscribe. If there's anyone new here, we're over 300 again, uh, but if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. That's easy. That's free. Now, if you'd like to stick around uh, with me and chat, I, I, I'm going to take my clothes off. Uh, it's not a pretty sight. And I'm going to lay down in my bed, and I'm going to answer as many of your things uh, that, that I can. And, uh, and yeah. So that's that. Johnny, are, 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 do you have dinner plans? No, he froze. He might have gotten the elevator. And normally, Johnny goes and has, you know, a slice of lime and a bowl of steam. He's watching his, his figure. But anyway, but Johnny did great, and I'm glad that uh, he, he did it. Uh, I'm trying to read your questions. Uh, See, some of you are stupid. Okay, so uh, I think he was getting in the elevator. All right. Uh, yes, Jason. Uh, all right. Let's see here. Uh, he's always an idiot, right? All right, we're almost there. So uh, to explain how you do it, the link is in the description for the episode. All you got to do is click on it. Go to my channel. You'll see it. it's going to premiere at, at 6.15. Right now in Las Vegas, it is 6.02. Uh, we'll go over there. Today's episode is a, is a little shorter. I think maybe 45 minutes. So we'll, we'll watch it together. We'll enjoy it. Tomorrow, we will have the candy challenge. I will represent the 70s, Johnny, 60s, Michelle. Uh, 90s, J, uh, 80s. That's tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday, Wednesday 13 will be here to tell us the state of all things in his world. And uh, thank you, uh, Ron. I think you're going to enjoy the cruising. Uh, um, I, it gets good. Curacao is my favorite episode so far. If you like to watch me make snarky comments and say stupid things, uh, that's the place to go. Oh, speaking of that as well, Instagram. I've been putting clips up on Instagram. Uh, so if you're not following me on Instagram, go ahead and do that. J-S-I-N underscore green. G-R-E-E-N. No E at the end of green. It's in the description as well. Follow me on Instagram. Let's be uh, Instagram uh, friends. Let's, let's uh, yeah. All right. Uh, any chance you might write a book uh, about your experience and travels? Yes. I've been thinking about it. You, you guys learn only a small fraction of my life. Um, and I would like to do that. I'm going to wait until Michelle has graduated law school, which is in a month or so. So uh, somebody with an educated mind can help. Um, but I, I'm going to start doing channel member videos, exclusive, and Patreon. I want to tell you guys about what it was like working in the adult industry, how I went from a screenwriter on Hollywood movies to writing um, adult uh, movies and ultimately winning an AVN award. Uh, but I can't do that here. I can't tell you about it because they will flag every other word. I'd like to also bring on some guests who are in that industry and have a frank uh, uh, talk with them. And the way to do that is to uh, do member only chats. Members only like my jacket. Uh, this is the Clark Griswold uh, members only jacket. A lot of people uh, I didn't believe that I own that, but I do. And I just have it right there. Uh, I got to get a treadmill to hang it on it. Uh, so we can do that if we do channel members only. A lot of people also said they want to hear me talk more about tour managing business. Well, we can do that too. Members only. So it'll just be us and we can really like, dive into things. Okay. So yes, and definitely congratulations uh, to Michelle. Um, uh, Cabo Wabo says 80s candy was the best. I'm leaning towards that as well, but who knows? 
Uh, I have not looked at this. It's going to be a complete surprise. And uh, um, all right. Uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, how old was I when I got diagnosed with diabetes? I was very old. Very, very old. Um, okay. Yes. And uh, all right. So right now. 605 10 minutes to the premiere this was like a little unorganized and silly and just having some fun seeing if you guys liked it and uh are we going to see more of michelle's eye rolls tonight you were going to see way more and wait till the band is gone and it's just michelle and i in curacao and aruba you <laughs> and me speaking in a pop culture language that she could, could care less about uh, yes you will enjoy it uh, I agree, Jason. Jason says a box of wax packs, wax packs to do the gum review. I have the Halloween wax packs sold by Fright Rags, and I am going to do an opening of that too. But yeah, we should look into the old gum. And uh, there's Michelle uh, with the 100%. Uh, that's on the eye rolls. What razzles and what you call it? I like both of those, uh, and they both sound 80s. Good luck to Michelle in her last month. Uh, um, severe. Band, I hope I said that right, is saying 70s. Uh, would members only have a replay? Would work ruins my live schedule? I, Brian, it's not a silly question. I would have to look into that. Um, I, it should be archived so the members can continue to watch it. Um, but that is the only way I can get around playing you music or talking about things that are considered sensitive uh, would be to do that. You know, we've only, I've talked for an hour and seven minutes. I feel like I could go on and talk another two hours, um, but we got to get to the video. This is a fun idea. You guys are going to speak. If you guys watch this and you're watching, most people say only premiere videos early in the day. That's the trick to YouTube, the secret that I'm giving you for free. But we're going to try it differently. We're going to see how many people follow right now on this channel and watch it. Uh, maybe Michelle could share the link to tonight's video. Um, because I don't have it handy. And uh, does anyone in my family have diabetes? Uh, there's type two cases. I am the only type one that I know of, that I know of. Uh, and here it is, look at that, look how fast she, uh, she is. So click that in the comments and you will watch it uh, uh, as well. And uh, okay, the Reggie bar, boy, I wish the Reggie bar was in there. They did re-release the Reggie bar. I tried to explain the Reggie bar to Michelle. That's not odd. I mean, there's no way. I'm not even sure if Johnny would remember the Reggie Bar because he grew up in Chicago. Uh, but uh, so okay, a Gator gum. I think there was there was a Gatorade gum. Yeah. All right, and Keith, you are just on time. Is correct. There's 300 people watching. We're all going to go right now to that link, and we're going to watch the tour diary. We'll talk together. We'll have a fun time. We'll see uh, all that tomorrow. I'll be right back here. Candy Challenge, Wednesday, Wednesday 13. I'll be here Thursday. Sean Clark of Hollow, Horror's Hollowed Grounds and Malfunction. He's going to be here. We'll talk about horror movies. We're going to talk about pop culture and collecting uh, memorabilia. And then on Friday, uh, we'll find something special. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I, I appreciate it. And I look forward. To seeing you tomorrow. How about that? Could you imagine? Maybe this is going to be the new thing. I'll see you every day the next day. I, I am your internet uh, uh, buddy. All right. Thank you. And I'll see you guys right now in the live world premiere of My Life on the Road. Uh,